Happy Tuesday, June 18th, everyone. Hunter here at Weather on the Go. And in today's weather forecast, we continue to outline the chance for extensive heat across the United States as a heat wave continues in through late June and rounds of severe thunderstorms traversing over the northern periphery of this heat wave. We're going to be talking about that and the tropical weather update in today's weather forecast as a new tropical system is developing heading toward Texas and Mexico. We'll dive into the details later on in today's weather forecast. Hey, if you are new here to Weather on the Go, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. We cover Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics right here on this channel. Make sure if you like today's weather forecast that you leave a like down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today. So let's look here at the morning low temperatures. And are these really lows? Because this morning we saw temperatures in the upper 70s starting off here into portions of the plains, across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. And really, you can just chalk this up and say the eastern U.S. was very mild this morning. The western U.S. was very cool this morning. And looking here at the heat headlines across the United States in orange, those are heat advisories from parts of the Midwest near the upper Mississippi Valley, eastward through portions of Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, much of Kentucky there into West Virginia, Pennsylvania, all the way up into the Northeast and New England. These maroon red areas are excessive heat watches and these pink areas are excessive heat warnings covering near the Detroit area down toward Toledo and Fort Wayne, Indiana. So let's look here at the afternoon high temperatures today and you can see there's clearly a frontal boundary across portions of Minnesota dropping down into portions of Nebraska into Northwestern Kansas. Behind that much cooler temperatures with drier air. Some more pleasant conditions for the Dakotas today for western Minnesota, for Nebraska and western Kansas, and then further west from there. But then ahead of the front, it's all about the heat wave this afternoon. And you can see the area of heat is actually building our energy for thunderstorms. And yesterday was a very active day for severe weather, not only for the Dakotas, but also Minnesota, the Badger state of Wisconsin, all the way over here through Michigan, and parts of the Ohio Valley, especially Ohio in particular, into western and central PA and into western New York State and even some wind reports down here across the Tennessee Valley as well and even West Texas. So we saw a lot of severe weather yesterday. We had zero tornado reports, so that's some good news. There's the cold front as we go through today, dropping down through the upper Midwest and into the Central Plains, and that's where we're going to see the chance for severe weather. We have a slight risk. This is a level two out of five on the risk scale from parts of Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin, western and northwest Iowa into eastern Nebraska, down here into western Kansas and the Oklahoma Panhandle. A marginal risk of severe weather, one out of five here from Maine all the way back through Ohio and Pennsylvania, New York State into eastern portions of lower Michigan. The main threat here is going to be for 60, perhaps 70 mile per hour winds, especially here in western portions of Kansas. That's where we can see those more significant damaging winds and hail as well. Otherwise, the rest of us will see quarter size hail potentially a little bit larger than that especially in this yellow shade of color from the upper midwest back toward the central plains and a two percent chance of a tornado today anywhere from the canadian u.s border all the way down here toward the texas and oklahoma panhandle so looking at the thunderstorm fuel we do have today you can see the reds and you can see the purples here. This is 3,000 to 4,000 joules per kilogram of instability building up out ahead of that cold front. The cold front is the lifting mechanism. It's lifting those air parcels to get them to rise. That's where you get those thunderstorm clouds and thus the severe weather. So this afternoon, we're seeing spotty storm coverage along the cold front back here in Minnesota, western and northwest Iowa and eastern Nebraska. A little bit of a capping inversion further south into western Kansas will prevent more widespread storm activity until we get to this evening and then we'll see at least a broken line if not a squall line of severe thunderstorms from portions of Ontario all the way down through Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, into Nebraska, Kansas, and maybe even as far south as the Amarillo area there into Texas. We're also monitoring some marginally strong to severe storms across the Northeast and New England there as we get in toward the evening hours as well. Early Wednesday morning, this is after midnight, those storms will start to move eastward. They're really not going to be moving very fast, so heavy rainfall is also going to be an issue with these storms and they'll become a little bit more spotty after midnight. It was we start to lose the instability, the energy and thunderstorm fuel as we go into after midnight. Looking here at the mid-level heights here as we go, 
through midweek, you can see the heat will persist across the east, the cooler weather out west. This is a ridge of high pressure, and what that provides us is sinking air. We have a lot of sunshine out there. As you walk out the door, you're going to feel the heat out there. It's air you can wear. And then out west, we have the trough in the blue providing us with more active weather, but also cooler weather as the temperatures are much cooler out here. As we go into late week, though, most of the country will be engulfed in this ridge of high pressure. So that means we're going to start to dry out a little bit, but we're also going to start to heat up a lot more as we go into later on this work week. So let's look at this here on Wednesday. There's the cold front progressing towards Lake Michigan, into Iowa, into Missouri there, and into Kansas as we go into Wednesday. Ahead of that, you guessed it, more heat. Behind it, more spring-like temperatures into the 60s and 70s. Thursday, the heat starts to build back a little bit for the Central Plains. We're still very hot across the east here with multiple areas into the 90s, if not well into the 90s on Thursday, and then especially as we go into Friday, building those 80s back further north into the High Plains and the upper Midwest. We are going to monitor some severe weather chances. Spotty severe weather here three areas of a marginal risk one up here into southern wisconsin northern illinois and eastern iowa Another one back here in towards the Oklahoma, Texas panhandle, parts of Kansas, Colorado, and New Mexico, and then South Texas. That is in conjunction with our tropical weather feature down there we'll talk about momentarily. Here's some spotty showers and storms across the Great Lakes back here in the Midwest, Central Plains Wednesday afternoon, tomorrow. Very spotty coverage, so not everybody's going to see thunderstorms as we go through tomorrow. Thursday, we got a marginal risk up here for the Northeast and New England, for Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and New York State, and parts of Western Massachusetts it's in far northern Pennsylvania there on Thursday. Spotty storm coverage here Thursday afternoon from portions of the northeast back toward the Great Lakes here into the Midwest, and that will continue spotty as we go into Thursday evening. Right now for Friday, the Storm Prediction Center doesn't currently have any uh, outlook areas for severe weather, but I do think marginal, maybe even a slight risk for severe weather may be introduced as we get closer to the day on Friday. Again, here we go, spotty coverage Friday afternoon, and then more numerous storm coverage across the Dakotas, Nebraska, and then again, the same areas into Minnesota and Wisconsin as we go into Friday evening on the northern periphery of all of that heat. Here's the rainfall with multiple rounds of severe thunderstorms moving through the northern Northern United States, you can see the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, parts of Michigan here, especially back into Iowa, into portions of Kansas and Nebraska, and then back there toward the Front Range. We're going to be seeing those rainfall amounts in the orange and reds over two, three, four, even five inches in spots as we go through Saturday, June 22nd here. And looking at the weekend time frame, that trough that's going to continue across the Canadian prairies and the upper Midwest will continue to traverse the, uh, the northern periphery of the heat. That'll flatten out the ridge this weekend a little bit, but it's still going to be hot this weekend as across much of the contiguous United States. Here are your high temperatures on Saturday, June 22nd, a lot of 90s. Again, familiar areas, the Ohio Valley back down to the southeast on Saturday. Sunday, cold front starts to move a little further south, flattening out that ridge, but still, again, triple-digit heat, 90s across the east and the southeast U.S. on Sunday, June 23rd. Here are the precipitation chances as we go through the weekend. There's that low-pressure system, 993 up there in southeastern Manitoba, Canada, and the Canadian prairies. We have a cold front extending down to the south of there. We have some isolated to scattered severe weather. Again, same areas we've been seeing the last couple of weeks, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin on Saturday. That may traverse further east toward Lake Michigan on Saturday night. Then as we go into Sunday, that low pressure is over here in eastern Ontario entering into western Quebec, Canada. That will have a trailing diffuse cold front with it as we go into Sunday and Sunday night, providing us with a chance for some stronger storms again for the northeast during that time frame. But notice Sunday night, a lot of us drive out. That means the high pressure is in firm control here as we go through the following week. And looking at the rainfall amounts this upcoming weekend, not really going to be talking about anything too out of the ordinary here. The heaviest rains across southern Manitoba, much of Ontario and into southern and central Quebec, Canada, into the Canadian prairies, closer to the low pressure storm track. That's where you have a lot of that moisture. Rainfall amounts there of around one to three inches. Across the upper Midwest, same areas here. We, uh, you know, are beating the same tune here. Again, eastern Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, northern Illinois, and Michigan. Some of those areas could see spotty rainfall amounts anywhere from nothing to an inch. Just depends on if you get under one of those thunderstorms. Going into next week, we see a little bit of a pattern change here. We got troughs to the north and a very big heat ridge to the south, and this means most of the United States outside of these areas here of the Pacific Northwest and down into 
South Texas and South Florida, we're going to be well above normal here. It's going to be a blowtorch, folks. It's going to be very hot next week. There's the uh, jet stream to the north across the northern U.S. as we go from Monday, June 24th next week through next Friday, June 28th to end the month there. You can see we have a lot of instability and multiple models are showing this. This is the ECMWF model. This is the European model guidance. Purples, this is 4,000 joules per kilogram. Here's the GFS, the American model guidance. Reds, that's around 3,000 joules per kilogram. There's the GEM model. This is the Canadian model guidance. And you can see there's purples again, 4,000 joules per kilogram. So multiple model suites are showing this as we go into next week. So I do think severe weather will be increasing a little bit further to the south and the southern periphery of that jet stream, but also the northern periphery of all of that heat. And where that comes together, that will be especially in this red shaded color. I am concerned about a potential derecho pattern developing as we go into the last week there into June. This is something that we'll have to keep an eye on and this is a high chance of at least severe weather across portions of this region. Doesn't mean we have a high chance of a derecho, just any type of severe weather. It could be damaging winds, large hail or tornadoes as we go through that Monday, June 24th time frame through Friday, June 28th. Turning over to the tropics, the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida still has a 10% chance of a system just east of the Bahamas that's progressing westward toward the southeast coast of the United States. That chance is really dwindling as it's encountering some drier air, but we do have an area of interest here in the Bay of Campeche and the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Very warm here with those sea surface temperature anomalies well above average. Those, uh, those shelf waters there near the coastal Texas and east coast there of Mexico are very anomalously warm as well. You can see this will develop into a tropical storm here already. If it hasn't this morning, it will this afternoon and continue as a tropical storm. We have tropical storm warnings from Corpus Christi, Brownsville, Texas, all the way down through the east coast there of Mexico. And this will be moving into Mexico as a tropical storm. This will be named Alberto as it moves further to the west and then, you know, weakening Thursday afternoon to a tropical depression there in central Mexico. This will be producing some very heavy rainfall amounts. Here's your rainfall totals as we go through the week ahead here. This goes all the way through the end of the week. You can see Corpus Christi, Victoria, Texas, all the way down toward the Laredo area and to Brownsville and the yellows and oranges. That's around six to 12 inches worth of rain. Some locally higher amounts near the coast of Texas is possible than that as well. And this is gonna be causing a moderate risk for flash flooding as we go through the next couple of days. So make sure if you do live in coastal Texas or even inland from there, like the San Antonio area near Houston, Laredo, Junction, uh, all the way over here toward Midland, Texas, something to keep an eye on. You have a slight to a moderate risk of flash flooding. So scattered to numerous flash flooding events will be possible in this vicinity as we go through the next couple of days. In the Eastern Pacific, a lot more quiet here as we do have the next seven days. Nothing to talk about here. So that's some good news. We'll keep a very close eye on the east coast of Mexico and the coast of Texas with tropical storm Alberto developing and we'll keep you updated on that. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below as we cover southern Canada, the United States and the tropics on this channel. Be sure to give it a like if you like today's weather forecast. Leave any comments, questions and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Tuesday out there.